Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So I get some form of the following question very regularly, right? So it's something along the lines of, I've done quite a bit of treatment in my room. I've got my setup, I've got my speakers and my gear set up. I'm quite comfortable in the room. And I've got like enough panels to kind of reduce the reverb a bit, but now I really need to fix the low end. Are you in that same situation? It's not surprising. I mean, obviously the way we tend to start treating our studios is by looking online for some acoustic panels, putting them on the wall, figuring out how to kind of deal with our setup and our speakers a bit. And we kind of tend to settle into that a bit, work with that a bit until we realize, you know what, the low end really doesn't work for me. And obviously the second part of this, why it's not surprising, is that it's actually really hard to get the low end under control. But there's a fundamental issue with this thinking, or rather there's a mindset that I need you to get into in order to be successful on this journey. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. The main problem with this is that unlike with kind of taming the reverb a bit or getting rid of flutter echo, it's not enough to just put a few panels in the room, okay? A few bass traps will not fix your low end. Of course, it's not surprising that it's easy to think that this might work, because obviously if you look at kind of manufacturers of bass traps and acoustic panels, the way they present these tools is usually in a way that suggests that you just kind of need to get a few of these and put them in the right spots in your room, and then that will get rid of your low end issues. Of course, what they don't tell you, or at least initially won't tell you, is that getting a good low end response in a studio is a combination of listener placement, speaker placement, and treatment. In that order, you really need to get the most out of each of these steps in order to get a good low end. And when we're looking at this in more detail, listener and speaker placement is mainly about optimizing the frequency response, getting a balanced frequency response at your listening position in the end, yeah? And the treatment is about controlling the decay time of the room, which in turn also improves the frequency response. It basically takes what you already got from your room, from the frequency response, and just kind of squeezes it, squeezes it down uh, and improves it in that way. But it won't drastically change the overall balance. That's why you need both. It's a combination of listener and speaker placement and treatment in order to get both the frequency response and the time response of your room under control. Now, if we look at the treatment aspect of this specifically, that's mainly about damping room modes, standing waves, right? These kind of get created somewhere below about 150 Hertz, and there will be a whole bunch of them and they will dominate the response of the low end in your room. No matter what room you're in, you will have to deal with standing waves. And so the main challenge with the treatment is damping these resonances, reducing these re this resonant behavior of your room in order to reduce any peaks and troughs and also cut down on the time aspect, the decay of these standing waves. And these are completely dependent on the geometry and size of the room. So the way to think about this is kind of like huge waves of water sloshing about in your room. Yeah, this is kind of the picture that I need you to get in your head. Low frequencies have extremely long wavelengths. And so you're dealing with very, very big sound waves sloshing about in your room. That's why you need to also deal with them across the entire room. This isn't something that you can deal with just by putting one or two panels in specific spots, yeah? With these large waves sloshing about, they just won't care. So low end treatment, damping standing waves is a challenge of treating the entire space. 
or in a nutshell, base trapping everywhere. And because this is a space challenge in practice more than anything, this is something that you need to plan right from the start. This isn't something that you can do after the fact because chances are you won't be able or you won't be willing to sacrifice the space for the treatment that it actually needs to get this done. And that's really mainly what I want you to take away from this video. Yeah, If you are in this situation where you've done some treatment in your room, you've settled in to your studio, you've set up all your gear, you're kind of comfortable with how things are in the room and you want to fix your low end, it doesn't mean that it can't be done, but it does mean getting used to the idea that you need to get things right from the start. You need to pull all those levers in order to get where you want to go. So you need to be willing to go back and look at your listener placement, look at your speaker placement, and look at how you use the treatment in order to get a proper low-end response. Yeah, If you are not willing to do that, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. It won't work. This is the only way to get to where you want to go. And in order to help you with this process, I've created a simple framework that you can follow to make sure that you're taking the right steps at the right moment and in the right order and that you're actually getting the right things out of each of these steps. You're not expecting any of these steps to do something they're not meant to do. Yeah, So that's why I created the Home Studio Treatment Framework that you can download for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to systematically treating a home studio and getting it to translate, right? So everything that I just talked about is in there, but also all the other aspects of treating a room. So when to bring in measurements, how to think about subwoofer integration, speaker decoupling, different types of treatment. It's all in there laid out so you're focusing on the right thing at the right time while you're working through the process of treating your home studio. And I've also got links in there to my very simple but very effective step-by-step -step guides to finding your listening position and setting up your speakers optimally just by using your ears, basically using a simple structured listening test. These are the Bass Hunter technique and the Phantom Speaker test. So make sure you check those out. These are by far the simplest and most effective ways to get started with setting up a studio and making sure you're focusing on those important aspects that will then allow you to get a good lower end response from your studio. Yeah, so again, if you haven't already, check out my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. It's completely for free. And I, I guarantee you that if you follow these steps in that order, you will be successful in getting the most out of your room and speakers. All right, so with that mindset, let's get back to what it's all about, having fun making music in the studio, learning to trust our ears. I'll see you in the next video.